Okay, welcome back. Our base operating system installation has completed and I went ahead and installed the MAZ packages via the command listed in the test case. This one right here. I also installed a few select packages that I like to have on each box including SSH so that we can open a session back to this virtual machine remotely and that was this command. We've installed SSH Nano, which is an editor, IP traf, and HTOP for performance monitoring on demand, uh, wget links, and DNS utils, which is needed for um, testing name resolution. So I will pretty much steer clear now of the VGA emulation window and switch over to verifying that we can connect back with an SSH session to our virtual machine. Apparently I'm having password trouble today. There we go. Next I'd like to confirm the network configuration. We do have an IP address. And a default gateway. Our name server is as expected. and we're able to resolve a DNS query. Finally, to test connectivity to the world, I'll run a ping, and we are able to pass traffic. So that's all good news. I'd like to jump back to the test case now, where the basic principle for this test number one is to ensure that we can install MAS and interact with its HTTP front end, which is available at your IP address of the virtual machine slash MAS in all caps. Now since this is in a network bubble, if you will, we'll need to launch a browser from the perspective of your virtualization host. And we want to go to our IP slash MAS and confirm that the web interface is functional. And it is. Again, bouncing back to our test case, the next thing we need to do is create the super user, which is also advised by the web interface. We'll need to do that from the MAS controller. Okay, super user created successfully. We'll go ahead and refresh. Now we're presented with a login to the MAS interface. And we want to confirm that we're able to log in. And that does indeed work. So for all intents and purposes, that satisfies this first test case. I'd like to fast forward to one of the later test cases where we need to import disk images, boot images. That process can take quite a while. And um, I want to go ahead and get that started so that it can run. Um, as you see here, it may download four or more gigs. In my experience, it may be closer to 20 or more, depending on which platforms you enable. And so I'm going to actually prune down the selection of architectures and versions of Ubuntu that it's going to queue up for us because I only anticipate needing the uh, 64 and i386 for trusty and precise the two LTS versions so we will go ahead and edit the import pixie files configuration file And I'm going to remove ARM. I don't intend to do any testing with ARM, and that will reduce our downloads significantly. I am also going to limit this to precise and trusty. OK. 
I'll save and exit that. Now just for good measure, I'm going to reboot my virtual machine. And then we'll verify that the HTTP interface is still alive. And we'll go ahead and kick off the image import. Back to our dashboard, I'll do a refresh again. The top portion of the MAS interface is generally um, pretty interactive. If something needs to happen, it will advise. And so we can go into the cog icon and click on Import Boot Images. There's really no indicator as to the status, and you can kind of watch a log file if you want to. Notice I've got my bandwidth monitor in the background. And so shortly I expect that to start spiking. While that's happening, we'll switch back to the virtual machine. And um, I'll show you where those images will land. It'll be right here in the, um, the Varlab Maz folder. I expect to see the TFTP and ephemeral directories start to grow as the downloads start. And we can see now that um, some things are starting to come in. And indeed, the directories are growing. So that could take quite some time. There are several logs that could be handy to watch. Okay, so I'm just going to let this simmer, and when we pick back up, we will be starting to create some nodes and enlisting them in our new MAS environment.